Thanks so much for joining us today. We'd love to hear how God is using this church to impact your life. Please send us your stories to info at championschurch.org.uk. We hope today's message encourages and inspires you. I really need prayer this morning. I always need prayer, but I am in trouble. Please, please help me. I am in trouble. Two weeks ago, I had a confession to make in that I told all of you that I was in a coffee shop studying for several hours. And uh, I finished after about six and a half hours in that particular place. The place was rammed. I got my Bible, was making notes. I got my spiritual face on. I looked like I was with Jesus. And uh, everything was going fine that morning. And when I closed my iPad, we, I told you about the highly embarrassing situation that coming through my iPad in full volume, and I have a special volume thing that I've uh, done on my, on my uh, iPad to give me extra volume, coming through the speaker of my iPad into the coffee shop that was packed, and here I am, a man packing his Bible, is, and the, the song Sexy Girls comes through. <laughs> Some of you are now going to leave the church and never come back again. Uh, we often say you'd rather have a pastor that's real than one that's right all of the time. So I'm just telling you, life happens, uh, but I'm in trouble further from that day. This week, I received through the post a 60 pounds parking fine for the time that I was there. And some of you spiritual people right now are going to go, I told you the judgment of God would fall on him for that. I do not need you to say that. We are going to take an offering. 60 quid for studying the Word of God. It cost me 10 pounds an hour. I can hear you saying, serves you right. Serves you right. You wait till something happens to you. I'll come knocking on your door and say, it serves you right. I need your love at this time. I'm in big trouble with my wife. She said, that's the second parking fine you've had. I didn't even contest it. I've just paid it. And said, well, there we go. I'm telling you that because... Uh, could you lend me a fiver? <laughs> All right. Okay. There we go. Well, how exciting is everything. And, uh, you know, with the excitement, the reality is that we all need during this month and especially these next 10 days to really focus in, fast, pray. If you've never fasted before, fasting really is usually speaking in the Bible, giving up food for a spiritual reason. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that in the, in the few moments that we have today. But I'd love every one of you to engage with us in that journey. You'll feel better for doing it. You may even feel slimmer for doing it, but that's not the reason. It's not a diet. Uh, fasting is a focus that we take, and we're especially praying for our building and for month of Mondays, and so many other things that are happening around us. School's work is exploding. Can you believe on one lunchtime now in the largest school in this area that Caleb and the team are having 100 children uh, coming into a classroom? It's absolutely rammed, and uh, three schools are now opening to us, so we need so much prayer. Uh, prayer says to God, I humble myself before you. Fasting says, I humble myself even more before you. Fasting says, I love food. Isn't it amazing how many McDonald's and pizza adverts will be on the telly in the next 10 days? They'll be double. You just know it, double. So as you leave church today, uh, have plenty of meal, eat the whole pie, uh, have custard cream, ice cream on it as well, just to stock yourself up. <laughs> Some of you. All right, I'm just trying to make light of a pretty heavy thing sometimes. Uh, but just to say, many of you are already partnering with us on our app, Champions Church app. You can see a picture of what it looks like there. If you go into the app, you can see every Sunday's messages on video. And many people watch our services from that. We have almost 3,500 people now who potentially are reading uh, Fresh Hope, which is a daily inspiration that I, myself, and others write every single morning. It comes to your phone. It's there at 6 in the morning, and uh, you get just a couple of minutes inspiration. 
And the reason I'm talking to you today is if you haven't downloaded it, or if you have, then during the next 10 days, I'm going to be writing every morning, ready for when you get up, about fasting and prayer. Because how many of you know, it's a private affair, but we do need some help, don't we, to get us through and especially the first couple of three days, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult if you're... Everybody loves food, don't they? And it's designed to just kind of say to your stomach, Oi, shut up. I'm focusing on God this morning. Pray with me this morning, Father. Thank you so much in church. We can have fun. We can have exuberance. We can have excitement. We can have noise. And we can have quiet. And we can have tears. Today, we thank you so much Jesus, for your presence here in this service. We especially thank you for every child, every baby, every parent, and the plans that you have for these children. Thank you for the investment that we are about to make into these children's premises that will see the children's work here explode. There is so much potential in every child that we believe in, and we want to make sure that that happens and that, Jesus, you're present in their world and their lives. Today, we thank you for this message. We pray in these next few moments together that you'll challenge us and help us enrich our lives and help us today, if we don't already know Jesus personally, that we today will come to know him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give one more shout of praise to God, shall we, this morning. Well, one of the most important questions that a person asks now in the 21st century is, uh, do you have Wi-Fi? Do you have Wi-Fi? The most important question of the century. The second most important question of the century has got to be, uh, do you have the password? Without Wi-Fi, we don't survive anymore. Without it, we we tend to skip going to that coffee shop that doesn't have Wi-Fi, and we go to the other one that does and then if we even ask, to go, if we're asked to go to somebody's house, we ask them, oh, excuse me, when you get there, do, do you have Wi-Fi? Uh, if they don't, we don't go again. We defriend them. At times in our lives uh, with the Wi-Fi stuff, and I want to use that to spiritualize something here this morning. That's the way Jesus spoke. He took something familiar and spoke about something unfamiliar normally spiritually unfamiliar. And so with the Wi-Fi, there will be for all of us that dreaded moment when our life comes almost, we feel, to an end, and that is when the Wi-Fi signal goes down. Ha! The end of the world. It's gone. Everything stops. But you know by now what to do. You leave the room, and you go for this button here, reset. Reset is one of the most important things of the 21st century with modern technology. However, with our lives, we don't know how to reset. So we, we, we complain every day about our lives are cluttered with stuff and how we don't seem to be able to see clearly. And we moan and groan about family, husband, wife, spouse, whoever, and my job and everything. Friends, can I just ask you this morning, learn to reset your life. Now, reset is pretty simple when you know how. Prayer and fasting is a spiritual reset button. And you need to go there. That's why Jesus himself modeled a life of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting helps you to clear the spiritual airwaves that have got clogged up with too much stuff. You know, you've been having arguments of late and you can't see clearly and your marriage is on the rocks and your kids are like demon-possessed and, and everything about your life, is seem, it just seems as if it's a fog. The channels that you want to tune into in your brain, you can't seem to get there. You can't see clearly. So it's simple. You ready? You need to press reset. Reset is that moment when your life is cleared of all the junk, all the backlog of everything that you've been doing, 
and all those conversations that you've been having and you want to clear them, God designed prayer and fasting to enable us spiritually to get clear. I'm going to give you three things that I believe that you'll relate to because prayer and fasting is a restorer of settings. It clears stuff. It helps you to retune, redefine your life. Some of you have not stopped for ages. You're on the run all the time. Run, run, run. Work, home, eat, gym, bed, wife, breakfast, kids, job, help, can't pay bill, merry-go-round of life. You don't know how to stop. Today, join us as a church family as we, each of us, both privately and corporately press the button to say, now this is what's going to happen. There's three things. You'll recognize these from pressing reset on your Wi-Fi. I almost said press reset on your wife then, but uh, <laughs> similar spelling. I'm the wifey. How many of you would like to press rate? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's over there. I'm in enough trouble from the first service, so I'll just do that this morning. All right. Here we go. Things happen faster when you fast. Apart from eating. Fasting is the slowest thing in ever, isn't it? Yeah, those burgers just look juicier and that pizza look cheesier and, and, and everything. I mean, you're walking past the neighbor's garden as you're taking the dog for a walk and not only the dog wants the bread off the lawn, you want to get down on your hands and knees and eat that bread. It looks so appetizing. Stuff you chuck away, you want to go through the bins and go, oh, I just want to lick that paper. <sighs> Give me a Cadbury's cellophane wrapper to chew on. Anything will do. That's part of it. But when you fast, when you give it up, things happen faster when you fast. They, they may not happen when you fast, but they'll certainly happen, certainly happen as a result of fasting. The second thing is things become clearer when you fast. The airways get clearer. You start to go, wow, this is amazing. We've done people, we've had people and we've done corporate 21-day fasts without any food, just water. And I've had people, I had an old guy who was 70-something years of age walk up to me at the end. He said, I don't want to stop. I just want to keep going. This is so amazing. My life is so much richer at 73, I think he was. And he just said, I just want to. Now, he, he, uh, he died through malnutrition, but um, <laughs> no, he, he didn't. He did decide to eat again. Yeah, yeah, he's a very thin man. He's a very thin man. Okay. And the third thing is, breakthroughs happen when you fast. Some of you are going, you know, I can't seem to get this sorted. Breakthroughs happen when you fast. You've been praying and thinking and planning and scheming. House won't sell. You can't find a wife. Or, you know, all right, I'm trying to have a bit of fun as well. Make it lighthearted as well as everything else. You say, that wasn't lighthearted. I am looking for a wife. Good, well, you'll probably find her here. Yes, okay, come again. But the truth is, Breakthroughs happen when you fast. Things happen when you pray. Things don't happen when you don't pray. So join us. Seven in the morning is tomorrow's schedule for everybody. And uh, are we in the cabin in the morning or are we in the, yeah, in the, in the, uh, in the cabin? Uh, it may be there in the morning, but it may have been moved overnight. It may be there. We don't know. It's definitely moving in the next few days. So, fasting, here's another couple of things, sensitizes your ears. Uh, I, you know, I haven't been out to hear, I've, I haven't heard from God. He's speaking, but it sensitizes your, he your ears. Second thing about that, fasting, um, fasting, uh, I'm sure there's a word I wrote down somewhere, fasting, that's the one, tenderizes your heart. How many of you have got a shriveled up heart? You know, you're annoying. You, you're kind of the way that you talk to people. You just, you know, push them to one side. Your heart's got shriveled. You know, somebody in the queue for your shopping at Aldi is just a bit slower because they're elderly or disabled and you, you kind of breathe in fire down there next to them. Hurry up, you stupid person. 
That's a sign of a shriveled heart. We need to get back to loving people, opening the door for people, and being nice to our wives. Gillian told me to, to say that. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. <laughs> well, part of my role here is to cast vision. Say vision. Uh, I'm here to teach the Word of God. I'm here to pray. And I'm here to cast vision. Casting a vision is very important. And vision takes time. And part of fasting should be, if you want vision, stop watching the television. It will help your vision. Uh, kind of cheesy, but it is true. Uh, and so what I want to do this morning in the few moments that we have remaining is just to talk to you about casting the vision for the next few, mom, uh, for the next few years. Uh, this series is called 2020 Vision, and the message title on the 2020 Vision for today is simply called this, Don't Give What's Left. Give what's right. Don't give what's left. Give what's right. Now, observations tell us that as a church gets larger, it also gets flabbier. It's a bit like your life, your body. If you get larger, <laughs> hello, now be careful how I word this, but you do get flabbier. And with that flab, you get slower and you prefer to watch TV with a pie than go to the gym and have a jog. That's human nature. Come on, I'm, please help me here. Uh, and so the flabbier we become, an observation is that as a church gets larger, its language changes to like language like this, leave it to the others. Or language like this, leave it to the young people. Or there's enough people here now to give bigger offerings. Uh, we've done our part. That's the language of a larger church. Uh, nobody will miss me if I'm not there. That's the language of a larger church. However, it's not true. None of it is true. Language of a larger church is, oh yeah, we don't need to be at month on Mondays. They'll have people there from all over the world. Not true. We're looking for you. Come on, everybody. Just, just pull your weight here. Uh, excuse the pun, and uh, be, be present. Don't just say, I'll be with you in spirit. Most annoying thing I ever get told, I'll be with you in spirit. You can't see a spirit. A spirit doesn't fill a chair. And we don't know that you're with us in spirit, and what you probably mean is you'll be in the bath. You just spiritualize it. So we get complacent. As the church grows, we look around and we get complacent, flabby. We used to be muscular. Isn't it amazing that 200 muscular people decided, we can do this. But when you get to like seven, eight hundred, nine hundred and something people in church over last week, and you suddenly start to hear language like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, I'm sorry, but it does. Because every person counts. Every single one of you, from the back row to the front, every single person counts here today. An illustration would be, if you've ever been on a jet ski, uh, I think I did it once, and uh, wow, it's, it's exhilarating, it's scary, but you turn what I call, I don't know what it's called, the handlebars, probably not called that, but, and the jet ski immediately responds. It's very quick response, small church, quick response. Then you get into a larger boat, and the captain turns the wheel, and it's a fairly quick response, but not as quick as a jet ski. It takes a little time. The captain of an ocean-going liner was asked, how long does it take to steer this and change the direction of this incredible boat? He said, two miles. You see, casting vision has to be early enough so that you can navigate the course. Do you know what this incredible one million pound building for the kids is going to do to this church? It's going to create more trouble. Because the do it's going to double the kids. You do know that. 130 kids is going to be 250 kids soon. It's going to create more trouble. You're going to start complaining, I can't get in the foyer. 
I've waited in the coffee shop line for over an hour this morning, and I still came out with water. You can't. It's going to create more problems. So if I'm going to cast vision, I'm not going to go, we'll wait now till 2020, and then we'll try and steer the ship. It'd be too late. You'll have stopped coming long before then because you go, it's too full, can't get in, can't get in the foyer, it's too, I don't like, it's too full. Now listen, so what we do is we cast vision now so as that come 2020, and in 2020, we want to we wanna build that to complete the building so that we have this incredible foyer, incredible large coffee shop where you can actually sit down and have a cup of coffee and even have your lunch after service and we can have all those things and even... You know, you can sit on the balcony out there with the umbrellas and, you know, overlook the beaches of Netherton. <laughs> All right, come in, you bathers. All right. All right. Canals. All right. So we cast the vision now. But it takes time. You say, why don't you just stop here now? We're, we're, we're just 14, 15 days away from the contractors coming onto site. They're going to make a mess because it's too late then. We need to start now. So I want to read to you a passage from the Old Testament. And here's my heading for the next few moments. Don't give what's left, give what's right. I want to ask you today with myself to realign, readjust, reset your life to this, the Word of God. Because you know something? As life progresses, we can get so far from that that we forget the goodness of God. We forget what it's like to have faith. And we start looking to everything else. You know, oh, I think I'll, God hasn't turned up, so I'll have a lottery ticket. Well, let me get back to the God of the Bible. So I'm going to the book of Malachi, and those of you who are Bible scholars will immediately say, we know where he's going. It's going to be about tithing. Caught you out there. It isn't. Not mentioned. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. This is what it says. A son honors his father, a slave his master. If I am a father, says God, where is the honor due to me? If I am a master, where is the respect due to me, says the Lord Almighty? It is you priests who show contempt for my name. But you ask, Lord, how have we shown contempt for your name? By offering defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? It's always good to ask God questions when you don't understand. By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible, when you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? But when you sacrifice lame and diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Hello? Your boss? Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you, says the Lord Almighty? Now plead with God to be gracious to us with such offerings from your hands. Will he accept you, says the Lord Almighty? Oh! that one of you would shut the doors of the temple, the church, so that you would not light useless fires on my altar. I'm not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty. And some of you are going, I wish you'd hurry up and get to the New Testament. And I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations. Listen to this. From where the sun rises to where it sets, in every place incense and pure offerings will be brought to me Because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. But you profane it by saying, the Lord's table is defiled, and its food is contemptible. And you say, what a burden. And you sniff at it contemptuously, says the Lord. When you bring injured, lame, diseased animals, offer them as sacrifices, should I accept them from your hands, says the Lord? Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord Almighty. My name is to be feared among the nations. When you take that passage, and some of you may have found it a little complex and complicated, and then simplify it, it is quite easy to understand what God is saying in the 21st century. He's saying, listen, you know, when you call a man father, father, in a natural, good, healthy relationship, have a guess what? When you call a man father, there is honor 
there, isn't there? Honors his father. And then when you call a man Lord or Master, in a normal healthy relationship, there is respect. So with a father there's honor and with a boss there's respect. God said, you understand that? And they go, yeah, that's great, God. We know all about that. Then God said, so how come if I'm your Lord, Master, King, Savior, Creator of the universe, how come when it comes to me, you fob me off with anything but the best? You give me everything that's left and you never give me everything that's right. Now in everyday modern English, we could say, and God says, where's the respect due to my name? Think about this for a minute. For those of you who rent a flat, an apartment, a council house, what if tomorrow you go to your rental office, or you call them, and you say, by the way, as of now, I have decided I'm only paying 20% of the rent. God said, see what they say? They go, yeah, brilliant. Not a problem at all. Yeah, we'll pay the 80% for you. Not a problem. God said, you know, when you come to bring offerings to me, you've got beautiful lambs, GT version, spring wool, shampooed, horns work. Oh, that's a ram, sorry. Everything looking pristine, and you've got them put away somewhere. And when I ask you for a sacrifice, you say, God, I hope you don't see them. And you bring this mangy lamb with three legs, off his ear chewed, off blind. And you bring him and say, God, here you are. And God says, don't you think I see? You fob me off with what's left when I ask you to bring what's right. And God says, try doing that to the rent office tomorrow. I tell you what, go to Aldi after this service. Yeah, I often see you in there. I even see people from our church who didn't come to the service and they go, whoa. I go, hallelujah. I saw you scurrying out last week. Quick, love, forget the shopping. Pastor Mark's here. Yeah, I feel like throwing eggs. Anyway, keep yourself pure, Mark. Go to Aldi, spend 40 quid, which is pretty difficult to do. <laughs> Got all this for 40 quid. Amazing. Go and spend 40 quid, get to the cashier and say, love, I'm going to give you a tenner. <laughs> They're going to go, praise God. Wonderful. Call the man here. Beep, 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 beep. Let's make an announcement. This man has bought 40 pounds worth of goods and now he's only going to pay 10 pounds. We're going to give him 30 pounds today. That's going to be wonderful. They're going to go, get security. Get him out of here. Put your food back. God said, I see you. You'd never do that, but you do it to me. You go, oh, the offering. Pastor Mark's asked for another offering for month of Mondays. Disgraceful. Let's have a look what we've got. Four Tic Tacs. Bit of fluff. Oh, yeah. The change from me McDonald's last night because I was stocking up for the fast. That's all I've got. Three pounds 47. Ah, oh, yeah. Put that in. God, here we are. Here we are. Yeah, that's fine. Except you've got two grand in your account that you're going, God, don't let God know that. As if he doesn't know. How foolish. You say, I'm going to protect my own account. I'm going to say, here I am. I'm going to give you everything. No, everything you've got in your pocket. Now, you wouldn't do it with Aldi, but the God of the universe who made you, gives you the breath to breathe. He made this universe, gives you life in your body. You do it with Him. And God says, curse is the cheat who has better things to bring. But when it comes to me, instead of giving me what's right, He gives what's left. You say, but we were always taught that. Well, I'm on teaching you. On teaching today. Because right now, friends, God is calling this church. His blessing is upon it. But let's make sure we don't lose it because we just become like everybody else that says, oh, we, you know, we just palm God off with anything you want. Yeah, try telling that to your mortgage bank. I'm not paying the mortgage anymore. Unless there's a really good reason, of course. And then you go, 
and they go, yeah, brilliant, no problem. Isn't it amazing how we can, we can, we can hoodwink God and go, are you pleased with me, Lord? And he goes, curses the cheat who has a better offering to bring and you don't bring it. We get we sly with God as if he can't see it. So today, friends, I'm calling us as we get into this on the eve of our fast, that we realign, that we reset our lives to the Word of God and say, God, I'm, I'm making you Lord, making you Lord of my life. We were with Pastor Dave Carr last uh, weekend, many of you, uh, Mankind event, Dave was there, longtime friend, just been awarded an OBE, been to see the Queen. Uh, had lunch with the Pope. Some of you won't like that because you go, oh, it's Catholic. We don't want to do it. No. Hey, come on. Sat on the platform with cardinals and bishops by invitation. 100,000 people in the crowd. And a cardinal came over to the Pope and whispered to him. And Dave was there and said, where shall we put the Virgin Mary on the platform? And the Pope said, Nowhere. He said, excuse me, Pope, where shall we put the Virgin Mary on the platform for this special gathering? He said, did you not hear me? Nowhere. Jesus is Lord. The Pope. Jesus is Lord. Everybody on your feet today. Jesus is Lord. You know, we sing... Jesus is Lord, and we raise our hands, Jesus is Lord, and you know, uh, I surrender all. And then really, God said, you disrespect, disrespect. Listen, the best way of doing this is don't call Him Father, don't call Him Lord, walk away if you're not going to be serious about this. And friends, I, I, I love fun, I know how to have fun, not enough, and, and we can laugh, and we have laughed. And there'll be times of fun and there'll be times of seriousness. In the first service, a lady brought somebody who's in our church. Uh, a lady brought a friend for the first time to the first service. And she said, this is Pastor Mark. He's not normally like this. <laughs> Meaning, he doesn't normally preach so hard. I said, no, you have to come for 12 months to get the whole deal. I understood what she meant. She was trying to say, don't be scared by him today. That's okay. But I tell you this, I'm so serious about this. Some of you have heard my story, and I want to say this to qualify as we close. This is not about equal giving. A woman in the Bible gave two pennies, and Jesus said she gave more than everybody. And yet a millionaire who gives two pennies, God said, that's a disgrace. You see, some of you here could invest into the next building because that one is sorted. And you go, no, nah, I can't do it, can't do it. You know, I've got to hang on to it, hang on to it, hang on to it. So I gave my life savings in my 20s. I cleared everything out. And I'm sitting in a service and there's two pounds burning a hole in my pocket. And the Holy Spirit says to me, I want the two. I said, Lord, you've had everything. I even tried to give away my car. Nobody would even take it. It was so bad. You've got absolutely everything. And when I said everything, I meant everything. I had no money to my name. Nothing. No earnings, no salaries, no pensions. I had zero. I was right down to the last two quid and a few fumes in my petrol tank in a car that I tried to give away because I wanted to surrender everything. And God said, I want you to give the two. And I... I'm arguing with God as if to say, you don't understand, creator of the universe. You don't understand. If I give the two, how am I going to survive? As if he didn't know. Pastor Gillian, when she spoke, said, there's a problem, but God's always got an answer. You know, what I didn't know is there was checks being written 200 miles away to come to my bank account. And every single day that week, God has already got the answer. All I needed to do was release what was in there. And the offering came around. This is to show you that it's not the power of the amount. The power is in the obedience. So I grabbed that two quid and as the offering bucket, basket, whatever it was, bag came around, I literally went like this. Well, there you go. There you go. I got one on me. 
got one on me? Because God, you've asked me for everything and now you've taken everything. But you know something? The moment it left my hand, peace like I'd never known before filled my heart. And God said to me, Mark, for what's coming your way to trust me for millions, I needed to know, are you willing to give absolutely everything? And I said, God, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm sorry for my attitude. And I surrendered that. You know, that week I had more. I was a Bible Scottish college student. I had more come my way than ever because God has an answer. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you take God seriously? Or do you say, Lord, Father, 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 I need, I need, I need. But when he says to you, okay, so if I'm your father and if I'm your master, where's the respect due to my name? And you go, well, you know, so we've all got a little bit flabby. Leave it to everybody else. It's not about leaving it to everybody else or the young people or those people or that group. It's about every one of us giving God his rightful place. So right now, are you ready to worship this morning? We're going to bring Jesus and we're going to say, Jesus, center stage. Nobody else. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Come on, let's say it in this service. Jesus is Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's start to worship right now. Let's sing about Him. Let's make that decision. Let's reset our spiritual buttons today. Let's grab a hold of Jesus. Make Him our Father, our Boss, our Master in Jesus' name right now. Woo! Thanks for listening to this week's message from Champions Church. We hope you'll stay connected by following us online. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook.